Hi guys, my name is Bex, welcome back to my channel and today I'm bringing to you my Christmas at Hogwarts vlog. So guys, I am starting this vlog a little bit early to tell you what my read is going to be for the first challenge. So the first challenge is finish off your current coursework, which is of course finish your current read. And at the moment, I have two of them. The first book I'm reading is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, which is the Witchathon group book. But if I'm honest, I'm not really feeling it. Um, I'm about 40 pages in. I don't know whether it's because it's a very wintry book and it's summer here that I'm just not getting it, but I will see how this one goes because I'm not sure if I'm going to continue or DNF it. So this is on my radar and I'm also in the middle of the audiobook of The Raven King by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the Garbage Gang book pick and I really, really enjoy The Raven Cycle so I'm on to the last book which is The Raven King which I have unpopular opinions about but we'll just leave it at that for now and I'm like nearly finished this one so if I need to finish this one on the first day of the readathon like this would be perfect so I don't know which one of these two I'm going to read yet but we will see. At the moment it is Saturday it is two days before the readathon begins and I'm getting ready for a night out I've got my work Christmas party so I've just done some light makeup what I really wanted to do was actually film with this on so I didn't have to do it tomorrow but I was lazy and I procrastinated all day, but my shelves are very clean. I watched the Sassy Book Club live show and I've got a pretty productive day so far, even though I have not done what I needed to, which was film. So you will see me probably again tomorrow with probably the same sort of makeup style on and attempting to film for the week ahead because I have not done that yet. But I thought while I was here I would start my vlog and let you know that I'm really, really excited to be doing the Magical Readathon and let's just have an awesome reading week together. I'll chat to you guys really, really soon. Bye. Hi guys, it is day one of the Christmas at Hogwarts Readathon and I am ready. Hi guys, it is day one of the Christmas at Hogwarts Readathon and I'm super excited to finally be starting this readathon. I've been waiting for another readathon from G and I'm just so, so excited. It's kind of Christmas at Hogwarts base and it's not about our exams, it's about having fun. So what I thought I would do today is run you through my TBR. Let's get straight into that. So the first prompt is finish your coursework and everyone has this prompt which is really exciting because you can finish your current read which is always the struggle when doing a readathon in my opinion. Um, so so for that one I have two actually and it's because I'm in the middle of two and I'm enjoying them both. Normally I would kind of just kind of ditch one to the side for a bit but I'm really enjoying both reads so I definitely don't want to ditch any of them. I am 386 pages through The Raven King by Maggie Stiefvater so I'm nearly finished. I've only got like an hour and a half left of the audiobook and I read it at 1.5 speed so hopefully I'll be finished that in the next coming days but I'm just plodding along. This one is the Garbage Gangs book pick for... December slash January, we'll be having our live show in January sometime, and we've reread the whole Raven Cycle, which has been really, really enjoyable. So I'm just finishing this one off to be prepared for our live show, which I don't know when that'll be yet, but when I do know, I will let you know. And then the next read I have is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, and I am 184 pages through this one, and this one's a slower paced read. It's kind of a Russian folklore slash polar fantasy where Vasya lives with her family on the outskirts of Russia in the wilderness. And she has told stories of sorcery and folklore, which is frowned upon through the church. And her father marries after seven years after her mother passing and marries a really devout Catholic. So Vasya has the gift of that she can see the spirits and these demons and they're not really impressed. So. Uh, it just got interesting. It's been a quite a slow start, but I really I'm really intrigued at the moment This one and the Raven King fills my first challenge and then because it's a follow your own adventure story I go on to have a snowball fight with the Weasley twins Which is read a humorous book and I will be reading I hate fairyland volume 4 sadly never after by Scotty Young This is the last graphic novel in this series and I'm sad to see it go, but it's always very very funny the artwork is bright and beautiful and gruesome which I adore and I can't wait to see where this one finishes off and it's always so so funny it follows Gertrude who when she was young always dreamed of going to fairyland and then she kind of goes and now she's 30 
she's angry, she's bitter, and she wants to go home and she can't because she can't find the key. So this is what this is about and I'm excited to finish this one off. But like, why did you finish this one? I really enjoyed this. From there we all meet back at Three Broomsticks to have Mull Pixie Wine. And for that one it is read a book that should only take you a day or evening. And I am reading Saga Volume 9 by Brian K. Vaughan and Viona Staples. Fiona Staples, I think I said Fiona. Excited about this one. This is the most recent one out in the Saga series and they're taking a year break which is just really really cruel so I want to get to this one because everyone's been like raving and emotional about it so I would also like to dive in and see if I'm going to be emotional. So we'll see how this one goes. They're taking a year hiatus so I don't know what they're expecting us to do for that year while we wait for them to come back but we shall see. So excited to read both of these and I kind of picked two graphic novels because the next book I'm going to show you is a hefty one. So from Three Broom Six I'm going to attend a Yule Ball and that is a book you've been preparing yourself for and for this one I have gone with Vengeful by V.E. Schwab which is the second book in the Villains duology, trilogy, who knows. But look at the size of that book. I have been preparing myself for this one though. I'm excited to read it. This is the beautiful UK hardcover and I just can't with it because it's just stunning and it has its own bookmark and everything. It's just, it's extra and I love it. And I read Vicious earlier in the year and really, really enjoyed it. So I definitely wanted to get to Vengeful really, really soon. And I've been preparing myself because Vicious ended so well. So I'm not sure where this one's going to go, but I've heard that it's amazing so I'm excited about it. Hopefully it'll live up to my expectations but it's like a 500 page book so. And lastly I end up at bringing a festive treat to Hedwig at the Owlery and I have chosen this one because it's animal on the cover title series name and vultures in the title there's a animal feather on the cover and I believe the series title also has an animal in it as well so yes and this is the quarterly book club book pick for winter so we will be talking about this one on the 26th of january i believe at 11 pm british time so definitely join us if you would like to but really keen to read this one this was jess from jess reads books picks and it's about a girl named nettie who lives in a land of hard people and hard ground dusted with sand she's a half breed who dresses like a boy raised by folk who use her as a slave this is all she knows until the day a stranger attacks her when a sickle to the eye doesn't stop him nettie stabs him through the heart and he turns to black sand so obviously the world's covered in black sand or where she lives is covered in black sand and she's kind of got to the bottom of it and now she's going to try to find her true kin if the monsters don't get her first so really keen to read this one so this is my tbr so far and considering that i'm already reading these two like i feel like it's going to be a successful time especially because i finish work on friday so it's my last day for the year on friday i don't go back to work until the third of january so I will have like time to get a lot of reading done hopefully. I've got a few festive activities that I have to do and stuff like that. But I'm hoping I'm going to film. I'm just going to relax. I have had a week off from filming now. So this is the 17th. So I should have a video going up today and Thursday. Which I will not because I just... I had no motivation on the weekend. So that's fine. It happens. I just got to accept it and move on. I have my schedule ready and hopefully I can kind of just pick myself back up after this few weeks off and just get back into it. So without further ado, I will not bore you for much longer and I will talk to you guys really soon when I have accomplished something or when I'm reading something or when I'm doing something. So yeah. again it is 6 40 and i've already finished a book for the readathon i know who am i now i'm pretty sure we're supposed to do these in order and accomplish each task one at a time um i'm a dirty cheat so i'm not going to do that so i read i hate fairyland volume four sadly never after by scotty young it was underwhelming oh my god so underwhelming so this is the fourth volume and the final volume so this is kind of like a wrapping up sort of thing and it was really just not good it was it wasn't not good. It was just average. Everything was so, so good in the others. And then it got to this one. And I was like, mm, that'll do. Um, so yeah, as usual, the art was beautiful. Like, really enjoyed the art. It's, I think, the most beautiful art I've ever seen. And my favourite comic art. But the plot and the storyline was just like, eh, that'll do. And so I gave it a uh, three out of five stars. So yeah, no... 
no good. Sorry for not doing these in order, but that's just the way I roll because I normally like to read The Bear and the Nightingale at night and I read The Raven King to and from work and on my lunch break. So like I needed something in that in between stage when you just get home from work, but you're not ready for The Bear and the Nightingale yet. So yeah, I finished that one. Um, so sorry. This vlog has turned into a hot mess really quickly. I was like, you know what, I'm going to try a different setup. See, I'm not holding you this time. Normally I'm holding you in my hand shaking because the camera's heavy. Um, but I decided to set you up. But as usual, you see my pyjama top that you see in every one of my vlogs. And my hair's kind of just over here. And look, the lighting's not very good, but this is what you're going to work with. Okay, guys, this is what you're going to work with for a 10-day vlog. So I'm sorry in advance, but, you know. What can you do? But what I decided I was going to do is I was going to share with you my booktube video of the day. Every day I'd be watching videos, as you know, so I thought I would shout out one every day and let you know who I'm loving, who I watch, and stuff like that. It's kind of a different way because normally I do cut in footage of me watching people, but I thought I would just shout out one a day so it's extra special. So you've got one shout out every day for 10 days, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, but today we are starting with G from Book Roast, my queen, and we're watching the book advent calendar reading. Christmas tree and cat play book rose vlog December 1 to December 10 it's really fun because I'm up to the part where she's like unboxing her advent calendar that Logan got for her basically Logan kind of made an advent calendar out of books which I think is the coolest idea and I'm gonna watch that and just chill out so I will catch up with you guys uh, later on today <laughs> That book was a big ship at the edge of the universe by Alex White and I can imagine Jess from Jess Reads Books watching this vlog and crying that G just got that book because <laughs> this is one of Jess's absolutely favorite reads and I am also hoping to get it for Christmas and if I don't get it for Christmas I'll go buy it because let's be honest I just want to make her happy and I'm hoping I love it as much as she does so I'm so excited that G got that one. So I'm just about to put my book down for the night. I read up until page 272 of The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden and I'm actually really enjoying this book a lot more than I thought I would. Like the first like 150 pages are really really slow but from there the story really picks up and I really really enjoy the mythology behind it. I'm enjoying this much better now that I am past the halfway mark. Sorry, someone's unloading the dishwasher. Um, so yeah, enjoying that. Um, and hopefully I can finish The Raven King tomorrow. I'm not sure if I'll finish this one yet. I'm kind of slow going, so I might get another 100 pages in. Um, so this might take me a couple more days, but enjoying it so far. So yeah, day one going well. I've already finished I Hate Fairyland, which was my challenge for have a snowball fight with the Weasley twins. And I am nearly finished the Raisin King and I am over halfway in the Bear and the Nightingale. So going well so far. Um, a lot more to go, but enjoying the readathon so far. Hopefully I'll have some unboxings for you this week. So it's not just me being super boring, um, but we shall see how we go. Talk to you soon. Hi guys, it is day two of the Christmas at Hogwarts readathon and I have finished one of my first books of the readathon. So my first challenge was finish your currently reading and I was reading two books. So the first one was The Raven King by Maggie Stiefvater and this was the book that I finished today on audiobook. So as I mentioned yesterday, I'm rereading this with the Garbage Gang and we are talking about this on our live show in January sometime and I... <sighs> I really enjoyed the reread because I knew what was going to happen anyway, but I really, really enjoyed the adventure, although it is one of the most probably underwhelming books of the series. The Raven King kind of ends really like 
flat in my opinion and I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the other books. I loved the character moments. The character moments in this were phenomenal but let's be honest the magic doesn't make sense so overall I really really liked the audiobooks for the Raven Cycle so yeah it was a really really fun reread and you know what could we be reading next is the question and I'm ready for whatever it is. Probably not going to be a long day two vlog. I'm not feeling 100% today. I did just get an order of jeans from American Eagle, so thank you so much for that. But I'm probably just going to rest. Yeah, I'm not feeling 100%. My throat's a bit sore. I'm a sweaty mess. Hi, guys. I thought, what better way than to feel shit on a vlog than to show you what I'm actually doing. So I'm actually eating a pizza. I have the whole pizza here. So, you know, if I'm feeling hungry, that's what I'm gonna be eating. Um, I've got Pepsi, because Pizza Hut don't sell Coke, which is just, don't even start me. And then this arrived. So, I'm gonna eat pizza and I'm gonna unbox this. And it's gonna be a chill time, but it's also gonna be a real life exaggeration of what my life is actually like. So this came from the US somewhere because Australia didn't have any more left. So it's got a little slippy thing on top and then it like folds out to be real cute. I'm not going to set it up. Um, oh, alrighto, calm down. Um, so yeah, let's just get started. So number one, where, what day is it today? It's the 18th. Shit, i got a lot of these to go to. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the first row today. Second row tomorrow, third row the next day, and then go one by one. So, you know, I don't want to give you too much in the one day. Even though it's the same vlog, it shouldn't really matter, but you know what? It matters to me. These are actually really, really small. But first up, I have little Haru. He's pretty cool. He's tiny. I didn't realize how tiny these would be, but I enjoy them. I feel like they're a good size. Sorry, you can't see that back here. I feel like it's a good size to go on my shelf, so... Little Harry's there. He doesn't stand up on his own, which is standard. Also, I eat the toppings off my pizza, like first, and then I eat the base, so I might be a monster, but you know. Sure, sure, I roll. We have what I believe is a Thestral. Um, he looks like that. He's real cute. I actually really like this one. He's cooler than Harry, I think. Yeah, I love how little intricate they are. Pop Funko just. He also cannot stand up by himself. What's the point of them if they can't stand up? It's my question. Okay, no, his tail keeps him up. That's good. We have little Luna. Luna's amazing. Luna looks really cool. I love this Luna with the glasses. I would actually like a big Pop Funko of Luna, but you know, I'm broke sometimes because I buy too many books. So day four, I think I've got Neville, but I feel like the Neville Pop Funko is a bit of a basic bitch. Like, there's nothing really going on there to specify that it's Neville. So, other than I think that's a Gryffindor sigil there. So, yay. Neville. This is probably the cutest thing I've seen. Oh, Hedwig, my girl. Still not over it. It's a little Hedwig. And Hedwig is possibly the best thing that I've ever received. Hedwig is so cute and you can barely see it because Hedwig is that small. Um, but I love little Hedwig. Hedwig's real cool. And the last one for today. I should just open them all. Uh, uh, it's funny because if there wasn't an F on Fred's t-shirt, I wouldn't know that it's Fred. I wouldn't be able to pick which Weasley. But it's Fred, so yay. Little Fred. Fred's freaking cute. I love Fred. Tomorrow. I will bring you six more, but I'm really loving these. They're actually a lot smaller than I thought they would be, which is fine. Like, you know, it's not the size that matters. It's how you use it or something like that. So I will put this away now and bring you some more, <laughs> hopefully no more inappropriate humor, um, but bring you more unboxings of this tomorrow. Um, yeah, so that's it for now. I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna eat my pizza and I'm gonna drink. My Pepsi and I'm gonna wallow in self-pity. Bye. Uh, so guys, I've just been um, chilling out, eating pizza, doing not much. Um, I was going to pick up my book, The Bear and the Nightingale. Um, 
but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go to bed. Hopefully today, tomorrow will be better. So do I look better on day three? I don't think so. So it is day three and now that I'm not feeling any better than I was in day two, I'm going to open the next six of my Harry Potter Funkos just so I have content. So, woo. The first one we got is real cute. I sound nasally and that's because I am nasally, so just ignore the nasaliness in the voice. Um, oh yeah, there we go. The first one we've got is Hagrid. Hagrid's real cool. I can't compare him sidewise to everyone, sizewise to everyone else though. He's got his little umbrella and everything, so that's nice. Now we are up to day eight. And day eight is my girl, Hermione. She is in her pink tracksuit and like there's like a tiny little time turner on her shirt, which is really, really cool. Day nine is Ron. Ron's real cute as well. At least you can tell him apart to his brothers because his brothers are wearing their Merry Christmas sweaters. And then we have day 10 which includes one of our favourite ghosts, Moaning Myrtle. Which if you look at it and take away the pigtails looks exactly like the Harry Potter one does so that's entertaining. Day 11 is here too and it's my favourite character. It's my Dobby and he's got a little sock which means he's a free elf, which is amazing. So I love that. Probably my favorite Pop Funko. I wish I had a bigger Dobby. And last but not least for today, we have George, which is exactly the same as Ron and exactly the same as Fred, but with his little G on his jumper. So he is distinguishable. And that is it for our unboxing for today. Check back again tomorrow. Well, don't check back, just keep watching the video. No reading again for me tonight, like as you can see. I'm very red and I'm very sore and very stuffy. So I'm just gonna try to get an early night and hopefully not wake up at 2 a.m. Hopefully. I will try to sort my life out tomorrow if I'm feeling well enough. Hi guys, it is day four of the Magical Readathon and I've just got home from work. I've showered. I'm watching a little bit of the People Squad and then Dark Judy. Um, but something arrived today. And what arrived was Soul Girl Girls by Claire Legrand. And I cried a little bit when this arrived because this is for my beautiful, beautiful human, Spence. I absolutely adore Spence. He's from Come and Spence. I'll leave links to his channel down below, but he is like, he's like my booktube king. I love him. He's funny. He's kind. He's sweet. He is extra. And I love that about him. And he sent me a book for Christmas. I'm really overwhelmed at the friendships I've gained over booktube and just getting books like this from my favorite people as just like, it, it, it's really overwhelming. I'm pretty excited about this one. I've heard it's quite dark, which I'm intrigued about. Beware of the woods and the dark, dank deep. He'll follow you home and he won't let you sleep. Okay. I've heard some amazing things and this book is absolutely gorgeous. It's a beautiful hardcover and I've heard amazing things about this book. I know Claire Legrand is the writer of The Fury, Furyborn or something like that. Um, but I've heard amazing things about this book specifically. So I'm excited to dive into this. And thank you so, so much to my King Spence for sending this to me. I absolutely adore him. And if you have not already checked him out, you definitely should. Because he is growing so quick on booktube and he's just a, a fantastic person hi guys so it is day five of the christmas at hogwarts readathon and it is what time is it it is 3 43 p.m i just got home earlier from work it is the last working day of the year for me so i've been struggling through work every day really unwell um but i'm starting to feel better today still really really nasally but because I signed off early yesterday, I didn't do my unboxing and today my owl crate arrived and I thought I would catch up, kind of reset in the middle of this vlog and tell you guys where I'm at, where I'm trying to go, how we're gonna get there, how we're gonna go from there. So let's start off with the Harry Potter um, Pop Funko Christmas Advent Calendar. We got up to day 12, so we're gonna start... This vlog is a fucking mess. We're gonna start with day 13 um and show you what pop funko i got he fell out of his bag um so we got dumbledore looking cool af so we got dumbledore the next one we have is another harry potter mini funko he is adorable i like him and he's kind of in his flannel looking outfit he's looking cute 
Um, and his broken glasses are on there and everything. I'm really enjoying this unboxing so far. I think I'm really excited to set these Pop Funkos up on my bookshelf and make it look a little bit festive. So next up we have McGonagall looking badass as usual. I freaking love McGonagall. I reckon she is the most like underrated character in Harry Potter because honestly she kicks ass. Then we have the Weasley that we haven't had yet which is Ginny. Unpopular opinion, I actually don't think Ginny and Harry should have been together. There you go. Next up we have Remus Lupin looking fabulous. He's got, oh he's actually got the scar detailing across his face as well. Now we have moved on to Draco Malfoy, which is actually the most probably dodgy looking Pop Bunko. His like, his hair's not on properly, so that's entertaining. Um, couldn't have happened to a better bloke, honestly. What day are we today? We are the 21st, so I'm going to open up until the 21st. So next we have Crookshanks. Look, and real cute. I actually love the animal Pop Funkos. They're real cute, and Crookshanks is amazing. I love his face. It's kind of like... Don't fuck with me. Day 20, we've got someone blue, so we've got another ghost. And it is another one of our favorite ghosts. It is Nearly Headless Nick. And what disappointing thing about this is his head's on. We have Severus Snape. And we're done with the Harry Potter advent calendar unboxing for today. Now we're moving on to the Owl Crate unboxing. I could unbox this in a video, but I'm probably not going to, so let's just do it here. Let's just get it over with. It's gonna, I'm gonna probably rapid fire it for you guys. Can undo it without a knife because acrylic nails for the win. Um, and let's just get this one through like as quickly as possible, shall we? Um, so the theme card is here and the theme for this one is Illusions for December, which is really, really cool. Um, I, I've got a whiff, not that I can smell very much at the moment, but I have a whiff of something. So something smelly is in here, but good smelly, of course. I actually love when the pin fits perfectly on the on top of the card, because that makes a good photo opportunity, let's be honest. This is what smells, I think. Yeah, so we have a candle, and I just want to let you know right away, it smells really amazing. Um, I don't know if you can see anything, but that's just going to be the vlog. Um, so it says the Lunar Queen, it smells of blackberries, vanilla, fresh greenery, and... It's from Flick the Wick, and it's this, oh, that poor candle has sweated getting here. It's very moist in there, um, but it's this beautiful purple color, and it smells really lovely. It smells like the berries, and it smells really fresh from what I can smell out of my left nostril, because the right's just not working today. It's a great color, but as I said, getting here was not friendly to it because there is a lot of sweat on top of that candle. There is this amber and dusk necklace. It's just, just beautiful yellow, yellow color. Um, I'm unsure what this necklace has to do anything, but I really like it. It might've been made by Alcrate. I'm unsure, but we'll leave him there and maybe we'll get more information later. But next up, we have this really, really cool ornament to go on your Christmas tree. It is an Alcrate exclusive from Juniper and Ivy Designs. <laughs> It says imagine and it shall be there are no limits and it's like a little castle it actually looks really really beautiful oh it's a, it's a shaped as a snow globe of course and it's actually inspired by the crowns game so that's really really cool oh next up I see this magnet which is of course by Ink and Wonder I would know Ink and Wonder's designs anywhere they're actually an Australian business so Shout out to my Aussie here. And it says, we lead strange lives chasing our dreams around from place to place. And it's like, it's like a carousel, like horse, which is just amazing. And the color schemes are beautiful. It's like purpley blue and beautiful. And it is inspired by the Night Circus, which I haven't read, but I think that that magnet is absolutely beautiful. I'm actually getting really puffed because I can't breathe out of my nose properly. So that's fun. Uh, next up, I think we have a tote bag, but we shall see. Oh, we do have a tote bag. It says gold shimmer no matter what, but few people could make darkness glitter the way he did by Stephanie Garber. So obviously this is Caraval inspired. And I think that's really, really cute. It's a good tote bag. We're getting a lot of tote bags in these boxes lately. And you know, one can never have enough tote bags. Let's be honest. Oh, and next up we have this planner. It is a magical monthly reading planner and it was made in collaboration with Blue Star Press and Owlcrate and it's actually really, really cool. I ordered a reading planner, so I'll be using that one. Give it a quick flip through. You got favorite books. You've got like a monthly set out, which you can obviously like, you can put like video ideas and stuff like that. New releases this month. 
monthly TBR, book reviews. Oh, this is amazing. I actually, my um, planner is coming from Little Inkling Designs, I think it is, and it's fantastic, so I can't wait for that. But this is really cool too. I think we have like a little exclusive sneak peek at King of Fools, which is Amanda Foodie's second book to that red one. So that's really cool, love that. Let's move on, let's move on. Oh shit, we're at the book already. I'll race through that, because we're already at the book. E I don't know how I feel about the color. The book we received is Amber and Dusk by Lyra Celine. I'm saying that funny because my nose is blocked, but here is the cover. It's this light purple. It's got like a little, okay, that matches actually the Amber and Dusk necklacey thingy we have here. Uh, but let's see, the back says, I deserve the chance to find where I belonged, to find a world forged in sunlight and honed on dreams, as perilous and intoxicating as the colors spilling jewel bright from my fingertips. All right. Oh, hey, it's signed too. Yay, signed book. I dislike this cover immensely. I think the writing doesn't really stand out against it, and I don't like the color. What a negative Nancy. We also have our owl scoop, so I'm just going to check what the original cover was. Okay, the original cover was pretty average too. So that's the difference there. Just a little bit of a color palette difference. And January's theme. January's theme is going to be magical artifacts. And we got a sneak peek. Every January box will include an exclusive item illustrated by Holly Dunn Designs. So yeah, that is that unboxing. I have shit everywhere. Probably my favorite item in here was the candle because that candle smelled amazing. And the magnet from Ink and Wonder because anything from Ink and Wonder is my favorite thing ever. The reading journal would have been really cool if I hadn't ordered mine already. But yeah, so overall pretty good, pretty good unboxing. I actually haven't heard of that release of that book, so you know, I'm not here nor there on it, but I'll give it a, like a go to check it out. So let's have a chill out to see where I'm at in this readathon. So, so far I have read two books in the readathon. I finished The Raven King by Maggie Stevotta for my first challenge, which was Finish Your Coursework. Um, however, I have another Finish Your Coursework book, which is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. I am about 180 pages, just over halfway on this one. I think it's 180. Oh shit, no. 272 pages through, who knew? Um, and I'm enjoying this, I'm intrigued, like the first half is really slow, but I'm actually really getting into it and kind of like loving this Russian folklore kind of thing. So that's where I'm at through that one. So I do need to finish that off, but I'm not gonna stop my reading just until I finish that because I'm a cheater. Oh. <laughs> um, I've also read I Hate Fairyland Volume 4, Sadly Never After by Scotty Young, which is the final I Hate Fairyland graphic novel and it was a bit average if I'm honest compared to the other ones in the series the colors are beautiful the artwork's beautiful but like it doesn't make up for a pretty average plot so that was my second one which is read a book that you'll find humorous and this is like the have a snowball fight with the Weasley twins and I read this one and it was okay next up I'm going to be reading saga volume 9 which is I don't have the stuff in front of me so I can't really tell you but it's the one where it's like we meet up for some mulled pixie wine which was read a book in a day or night, so that one's gonna be read. I'm actually gonna start reading that now. I've heard it's really emotional, so we'll see how I feel about it. And then I've gotta move on to my final two books, which are Wake of Vultures by Lila Bowen and Eventful by V.E. Schwab. So yeah, I'm going okay so far. I'm glad I'm feeling better and can read now because I'm gonna sit down at the couch and read Saga Volume 9. Before my family get home, um, I'm making carbonara for dinner tonight. I am glad I'm finished work for the year. It's been a long year, it's been a busy year. Next year will be a bigger year. As some of you may know, I was supposed to be coming to BookCon next year. I was gonna fly over from Australia, but like on a good note, I got a promotion at work. So I will be filling in for my boss's maternity leave for 12 months, which means um, I've got a higher role, a more stressful role, and it actually, the certain times of year, I cannot take off which is the start and end of every month so there's only really a two week window in the middle of the month where I can play around with leave um, which does not allow me to go to BookCon because BookCon's kind of over the start slash end of the uh, a month so I'm sad that I can't go but I will earn more money I will also save more money which means in 2020 it's going to be a big year of travel for me I'm planning on going over to Europe for about six weeks I'm also going to attempt to get to BookCon. I hit long service leave in the end of next year, so if you are not Australian, might not know what that means, but it basically means when you work for a company for 10 years, 
you get extra leave on top of your annual leave. So we get four weeks annual leave a year. When you hit long service leave, you actually get eight and a half weeks extra leave. So I will be using that leave in 2020. I'll also be saving for a house. 2019 is going to be a big saving year. It also means that I've got a lot more stress on my plate, which is not great, but I've been working really, really hard for this job. I got my degree for this job. I did a lot to get to this position. So I'm excited that I get an opportunity over 12 months slash or nine to 12 months to like reach my potential at work and see what I can achieve. And then we'll go from there. Um, but it'll be a big year. So that's why this leave period over the next couple of weeks is actually really, really important. I really need to relax and de-stress and get on top of my creative side as well. I really need to film and I really need to get some extra videos there. It's full weeks like the week just passed where I didn't actually film or edit and upload. Just for weeks like that where I'm just not feeling myself, just to have some content there for you guys because I love this community. I love being in this community. In the last 12 months, I've actually reached 1K. I think I was at 400 subscribers at the start of January when I released my goals and I'm at um, 1,280 subscribers at the moment, which like isn't a lot in the scheme of things, but I think it's amazing. Like, I feel like I've really grown on my channel. I feel like I've really put a lot of effort into my channel. I'm even doing vlogs, which I don't actually like doing because I don't think I'm, like my life's boring, so I don't like showing you my life. Um, but I'm, I'm doing them for you and I hope you enjoy them. I'm having fun with this vlog. You can actually see how red my nose is from how sick I am too, so that's fun. I look awful. And you know what? You wanted the vlog, so if I'm a hot mess in every vlog, then like that's what you wanted and that's what you're gonna get. Thanks for sticking with me over this past 12 months. I don't know why I'm getting really emotional. I'm not an emotional human, but I'm just, I'm exhausted. So this next couple weeks is gonna be a real nice time to just relax and I hope to talk to you guys and I hope to do some fun things. Like I really want a roast and raves live show. This is it, guys. I'm gonna now sit down and read Saga and I'm gonna get back to you guys later. So I will see you really soon in a second in this vlog. Hi guys, so it is day five of the Chance Extra Credit Readathon, which I don't need to keep saying because it's legitimately this vlog, so I'm not sure why I keep repeating myself. Um, and let's just talk about the elephant in the room. Now, if my nose looks really shiny, that is because I lathered her with purple ointment because she currently is real rough. It, it feels like, I don't know, a crocodile skin or something like she has had a rough few days so she might look a bit shiny but that's fine we just kind of leave her there do her own thing i finished saga volume nine and the fuck honestly first of all how dare you end like that and then go on a year break honestly that was on i feel i feel insulted i feel offended i feel personally attacked um that was a pretty fucked up way to end so Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Stables, not real impressed with you at the moment. Not real impressed. Um, this was really good though. I gave it a 4.5 stars out of 5 stars. And yeah, it was really good, but like why would you why would you do that to people? I don't really understand, but that's fine. Um, so that is the third challenge, which was how finish a book that you could finish in a day slash night. I've been missing for a little bit. I cooked dinner. I watched Project Runway because I'm addicted. Hey everyone, so it is 10.30, so I read for about an hour and I'm now up to page 352. So I am almost finished this one and although the start was really slow, um, The Bear and the Nightingale is getting really good. Like I'm really, really enjoying the mythology in it. It's, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm really intrigued and I'm really starting to love it, which I didn't get that feeling at the start. I kind of got this, oh, I'm going to hate it and then Jade's going to hate me sort of vibe. But then, <laughs> but the longer it goes on, like, the more and more I'm loving it. So, enjoying that. Um, but it's 10.30 now and I'm not sure what I'm doing tomorrow. I might be going to the races and stuff. So, I'm going to go and get to bed and rest up because I'm still, like, not 100%. Um, but I will talk to you guys really, really soon. Bye. After my, I turned my camera off, I realized that I got my Wi-Fi back um, and I thought I would give you my booktube video of the day and my booktube video of the day is actually a booktuber that has recently returned. Okay, so this video is Zoe from Red by Zoe. She has been gone for a while. I found her because she is in Bookmarked, which is a collaboration between Red by Zoe, Hayley in Bookland and Clockwork Reader. So I found her and I just thought her 
attitude and her style was really really cool like she kind of has the same sense of humor I do and she was being sarcastic and just witty and I really really enjoyed like getting to know her through bookmarked um, so this is the first video that I've actually seen her post um, so it's back on booktube a chat and yeah she doesn't need any shout outs or anything like she's at 183k subscribers she's fabulous um, but yeah this is my video of the day It is day six of the Magical Readathon, and it is about 3 p.m. in the afternoon. I have had a not very busy morning. I woke up still unwell, so I didn't go to the races today like I was supposed to. Um, but I have managed to start feeling better and finally finish the second book of my first challenge, which is finished my coursework, which is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This book, guys, I actually was pleasantly surprised at how much I really enjoyed this. The start was really, really slow, so I felt like I wasn't really loving it. But as the book went on and on, I fell more in love with the characters and the world and the mythology. Like, I've enjoyed mythology as a whole, so, like, I, but I hadn't heard much about Russian mythology. Uh, but I really like this. This is really, really good. I gave it a four out of five stars. I didn't give it the full five because the pacing at the start was pretty average and obviously I'm only going to give five out of five if everything was perfect so I think that pacing could have been improved a little bit. I can't wait to see what happens in the second one. Yeah the girl in the tower is the next one and I think the third and final book comes out next year or is already out I'm not sure um, but yeah really really enjoyed this and now my coursework is finished. Unfortunately my internet down at the moment because I wanted to read that in time for the Witchathon live show which unfortunately I had finished it but my internet was down so I couldn't watch the Witches on live show so I'll go back and watch that later and see what Rhiannon thought and what everyone in the chat thought so that'll be good. Um, I'm also unboxing my Pop Funko for the day so I've done that already and just got it out of the box. So I just thought I'd show you that it is Hermione and she's got her stack of books and it's really really cute and I can't wait to decide where they go on my shelf. But other than that I have been doing not really much. I'm gonna move on to my next challenge now so I've just got my laptop in front of me. So so far I have finished my coursework by reading The Raven King and The Bear and the Nightingale. I have had a snowball fight with the Weasley twins because I read I Hate Fairyland Volume 4 Sadly Never After by Scotty Young. I have visited Three Broomsticks for Mulled Pixie Wine and that was I read Saga Volume 9. And now we are moving on to Attend the Your Ball which is a book you've been preparing yourself for and I'm going to start Vengeful by V.E. Schwab for the rest of the weekend for Sunday. I, if I'm feeling better I want to film, if not I'm going to leave it for Monday because I am off work Monday as well. Um, so at this stage I've got a lot of things to film. I've got to film my mid-month chat for December which is going to try to go up Monday the 24th. I'm going to film my highly anticipated reads for 2019 from January to March which is going to go up on the Thursday. I'm going to try to have this vlog up by the 31st of December and then on the 3rd of January I want my best and worst books to go up so I'm going to film that like later down the track. But yeah I've got a few videos to film. I've got to keep on top of them because um, I'm also going away in January so I will be away for three upload days. So I'm away from the 13th of January all the way through till the 21st of January I fly back in. I'm going to the tennis, I'm going to the Australian Open. I love tennis so I'm excited to go see what that has in store um, and just have a good time on leave. So I can't only go back to work for seven days before I'm off again so it's going to be a good time. Um, but that's it for me at the moment. I will keep you guys posted on what I'm up to. Bye. Good morning everybody, it is 8 o'clock on the 8th day of the Magical Readathon and I am a disgrace. I have been missing for what, two days maybe? Maybe two days? Um, I haven't read anything in those days. Uh, the last time you would have heard from me I would have finished The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden and since then I have binged reality TV non-stop so that's a whole weekend full of project runway full of Floribama Shore it's been an experience but I am up today it is Monday this is my like kind of my first day of annual leave I go back to work on the third so I've got a few days off and today 
it's filming day. But because it is Christmas Eve, I've got a lot to do. So I have to make my mum's present, which is a bookshelf to go in her room. It's like an A-frame bookshelf. Um, so I'm going to go make that this morning, eat some breakfast, and then I'm going to attempt to film for the first time in over two weeks. So that's going to be an experience, but fingers crossed I can get it done, get it edited, get a video up, because the video was supposed to go up at midnight this morning, but you know, you know how it goes. And then hopefully tonight I can get some reading done. I've decided to get an audiobook. Instead of reading Vengeful by V.E. Schwab, I've decided to swap it out for Stalking Jack the Ripper by Kerry Maniscalco because I have it on audiobook, so I'm going to listen to it throughout the day and hopefully get some of that done and, yeah, see how we go from there. Um, but that's it for me today. At the moment, I will talk to you guys later. Hey guys, so it's nearly lunchtime and I'm just getting my face ready for filming and I haven't done my hair yet, but that's a whole different story. And I'm slowly progressing through my day. I have not read yet, but I have the bookshelf for my mother all put up. It's an A-frame. It's beautiful. Um, so I put that up and I've decorated it for her. And it's under the Christmas tree with a sheet over it because I'm not going to wrap that. Um, and yeah, that's how my day is going so far. I've just kind of organized what I've got to film today. So yes, I will start filming soon and hopefully can get into editing because I would really like to get a video up like today. But we will see how that goes. Hey guys, so I filmed my first video of the day. I filmed my highly anticipated reads, which I'm going to try to edit and get up tonight. But some packages arrived. So <laughs> here are three packages that arrived. I thought I'd unbox them for you while my camera's set up so we don't have to have this awkward moment in the letter. And I've got both hands, which is so rare. Mm. Oh, this is so sweet. This is a book off my wish list. I didn't know this was coming and I don't know who it's from, but it is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton, not to be confused with The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. These both came out around the same time and everyone's confused, but I'm really excited about this one. So it says, at a party thrown by her parents, Evelyn Hardcastle will be killed again. She's been murdered hundreds of times and each day Aidan Bishop is too late to save her. The only way to break the cycle is to identify Evelyn's killer, but every time the day begins again, Aidan wakes up in the body of a different guest. And someone is desperate to stop him ever escaping Black Earth. But yeah, excited about this one. I've heard some really, really good things. I've heard it's very dark and interesting. So, so excited. So thank you so much to whoever sent this one to me. I'm going to see if I can try to work it out. I can almost guarantee it's one of the wonderful garbage gang that sent it to me. They're just so sweet. We've been buying each other Christmas gifts this year. Um, and I realized that Book Depository is not a good place to order gifts. Like from now on I will try to get an Amazon wish list because it's been pretty painful but I will have to find out and let you know who sent me that because it's such an amazing gift and I'm so so sad that I don't know who sent it like immediately. There are more incoming gifts and I, I don't know what this is either but it's coming from a different country so I'm like nervous and excited. Oh. Oh. What? <gasps> oh, it's chocolate. Is it chocolate? Pe it's from Jade. It's from Jade because I see there are lollies here and they're penguins. And I know we've talked about penguins before. So, like, I've got, like, oh, no, they're everywhere. I've got, like, six penguins here. And then there's a little Christmas card. Aww. There's this cute little note, and I'm not going to read to you what it says. Oh, Jade, she sent me a book from overseas, and she shouldn't have, but let's give it a go. I don't know what it is yet. I'm assuming it's a polar fantasy. It, yeah, it definitely is. Oh, It's the Polar Bear Explorers Club by Alex Bell. Oh, So Jade loves polar fantasy, and I told her I haven't read a polar fantasy, even though I have now, because I've read The Bear and the Nightingale. But she's always wanted me to dive into polar fantasy, even though it's always summer here. So I'm so, so excited to read this one. Meet Shay Silverton Kipling, the captain's son and wolf whisperer. Ethan Edward Rook, magician and ocean explorer. Beanie, half-elf, medic, and well, you have to meet Beanie. And Stella Starflake Pearl, orphan and most determined of explorers. When Stella joins the polar bear explorers on an expedition to the Icelands, her eyes are open to the worlds of danger, adventure, and snow pirates. Out in the icy winds, there are giant, 
yetis, magical golden geese, terrifying carnivorous cabbages, and important new friendships to be made. Join the explorers on an unforgettable adventure across the ice. I know Jade loved this book, so I'm so, so excited. Thank you so much, Jade. You really, really shouldn't have. You're just too sweet. And I'm so, so excited to try penguins because I might try them now. Because I think what we said about these were they were very much like um, Tim Tams. So let's see. I probably should put them in the fridge a bit because I actually like my Tim Tams in the fridge. And they would have melted getting here, which they did. But that's fine. I'm going to eat it anyway. Yeah, they look... <laughs> they look very Tim Tammy. So the only thing different between this and a Tim Tam is that our layer of the nougat is thicker, but it's really good. <laughs> it's actually really fitting that this arrived on Christmas Eve. I'm chuffed, as Jade would say. So lastly, while I keep chewing, I got this one, which is from Little Inkling Designs, and I know what this is going to be. So the further I get into the penguin, um, it's a lot more... It's a lot more biscuity than my Tim Tams are at home, but still enjoying it. So earlier in the year I sent Jade Tim Tams and caramello koalas and some just Australian um, sort of snacks. So she's so sweet for sending me this back. I love it. Okay, that was a struggle to get into, but anyway, um, let's open it. And this is what I see. Ooh. It says, let's get booked. Thank you very much for your order. And it's wrapped really nicely. I'm so excited for this. There it is, guys. The always fully booked. This is the 2019 Book Lover Planner. And I'm so, so excited for this. I've got the calendar here. And it's all broken up. Like, dates to remember. 2019 goals. Oh, that is awesome. Oh, my goodness. I've, that's so, so cool. And I'm so, so excited that this arrived. I've been waiting for this. Oh, I need to get this one on a bit. Got it on properly now. Um, but I've been waiting for this to arrive and I'm so, so excited to receive this and to use this for this year's planning. And that's it for me at the moment, guys. I'm going to find out who sent me Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle and I'm going to go thank all my amazing people for sending me this stuff because they're just so, so sweet and they really didn't have to and they did and I just love them for it. Hey guys, so it's nearly 10 o'clock on the 24th. It is Christmas Eve and I'm outside watching the carols with my mother. But I thought I would give you the last two Pop Funkos in my Pop Funko advent calendar because I keep forgetting to show them to you. And I'm going to show them to you in a pair because it is Harry and Ron in their jumpers by Molly Weasley, which is our last Pop Funkos. And I'm just so, so excited to have these. I think the advent calendar was amazing and I can't wait to put it on top of my bookshelf. I think it's going to go right up top. Um, and I just thought it was a good time. Um, my day today has been filled with filming editing i went on live on instagram for the first time and i was joined by my favorite person bunny and we we had a good chat until our hour was up which was really rude that, that cuts out and i filmed an editor and got up a video which i will leave up here for you guys it is my 2019 highly anticipated reads i ditched my mid-month chat this month i was gonna film it and i was like it's the 24th nah. so i've replaced that and thursday we will have going up my kind of goal reaction my 2018 goals reaction which is going to be interesting um but yeah so that's about it for me at the moment i am going to head to bed i might try to no it's 10 o'clock i'm probably not going to read let's be honest um booktube video of the day though is uh is going to be my girl chelsea from chelsea darling reads is her smartathon vlog so you will see that coming shortly and i will chat to you guys later <laughs> Christmas everybody. I have had a massive day so far. It is about four o'clock and I am heading to the second event of the day and it's been a big day but I'm really excited because for my birthday not only did I get a book I got a Rode microphone. I'm pretty pretty stoked but yeah really good day. I hope you're having a Merry Christmas um, or a Happy Holidays and I will talk to you really soon. Bye. Hi guys it is 10 20 p.m. on Christmas Day and I am just putting my book down and going to bed. It's been a big day. I finally started reading my f fourth book. Yeah, my fourth book of the Magical Readathon, which is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Kerry Maniscalco. I traded this one in 
from Vengeful by Vivi Schwab. I'm just not feeling Vengeful at the moment. I feel like I'm going to save that one for later. Um, so I kind of ha I have the audiobook of this one, so I kind of swapped it in. I am 32 pages in, and I'm listening to it while... I'm listening to it on audiobook while I read along with it in the book. So keen to continue this one. It sounds all right. I'm loving that there's pictures in the books that I can kind of look at while I listen to the audiobook. And it's, yeah, a bit like the first couple of pages. It's like, oh, this is a bit gruesome. Um, but yeah, so I've had a pretty good Christmas day. It's been a busy day. We had to go drive about an hour out of town to go to our first stop of the day for lunch and then an hour back and then very close for dinner. Um, and now I'm ready to go to bed and have a relaxing day tomorrow for Boxing Day. Uh, if you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. If you do not, Happy Holidays. I hope you're having a good time off. I hope you get time off. Um, and I will talk to you guys really soon. I'm going to go to bed. Bye. Chapter 7. A Study in Secrets. Wadsworth Residence, Belgrave Square, 10th September 1888. Hi guys, so it has just ticked over at midnight, so now it is the 27th of December and the magical readathon Christmas at Hogwarts has now finished. And I am about 230 pages into my fourth book, which is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Kerry Maniscalco. I did not get this one finished. I will probably finish it tomorrow on the 27th, just because it's getting a little bit hectic and I'm getting really into it and I need to sleep. So I'm asleep and I'm going to sort that out tomorrow. Um, but yeah, it's over. The readathon's over and I'm... Disappointing that I didn't finish all the books I wanted, but I'm going to continue the books I'm reading for the rest of my TBR for the month and hopefully get them finished anyway. So I think I'm just going to turn off this vlog tonight and then tomorrow I will give you a wrap up of how my reading went. So I will see you guys in a few seconds for my wrap up. Hi guys, so it is the 27th of December and the magical readathon Christmas at Hogwarts has officially ended. And what I'm going to bring to you today is a quick little wrap up of how I went on the readathon and what I read and just wrapping up this whole vlog and hopefully it's not a mess. So during the Magical Readathon, I ended up reading four things which I was pretty excited about. I finished three of the five prompts and I am like a hundred pages, if not less, of finishing my fourth prompt. So quite a good effort considering that for the first prompt, I had to read two books because I was currently in the middle of two. But let's get into that. The first one I had to complete was finish your coursework, which is finish your current reads, and I had two. So I finished The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, which was a Russian folklore tale about Vasilisa who could kind of see spirits and stuff like that. It was really good. I gave it a four stars. It was better than I expected, and it was better than the first 150 pages. The first 150 pages was so slow. But I got through it, and I also finished The Raven King by Maggie Stiefvater. This I gave four out of five stars. It's probably my least favorite of the Raven cycle, but I still enjoyed it. So I finished those two for the first prompt, and then my path took me to have a snowball fight with the Weasley twins, and then that was a book you think you would find humorous. And I read I Hate Fairyland, Volume 4, Sadly Never After by Scotty Young. And I gave this one a 3 out of 5 stars. This was a disappointing end to the graphic novel series. So I'm sad that I didn't love it. I still love the art style. The art is beyond beautiful. But it just, it wasn't as good as the other ones, unfortunately. So I was a little bit disappointed. And this whole graphic novel series follows a girl named Gertrude, who always wanted to go to Fairyland, and then is sucked into a hole into Fairyland, and then she's nearly 40, and she can't get out. Everyone else has always come in and gone and she just can't and she's angry and she's bitter and she's murderous and it's, it's interesting. I liked the whole graphic novel series, it's one of my favourites, but unfortunately this one was not my favourite. And then from there I visited Three Broomsticks for Mulled Pixie Wine and that was read a book that should only take you a day or evening. And I read Saga Volume 9 by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples and it was emotional. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars, which is the highest rating I've given a Saga graphic novel. It was next level and I'm a little bit taken aback because the ending was brutal and then we won't see any more of these at least for another 12 months. And basically Saga is like Romeo and Juliet in space with different species and they fall in love and have a baby and everyone hates that and they're trying to be assassinated. So yeah. Saga Volume 9. From there I should have more moved on to attend the Yule Ball and I did attend the Yule Ball technically um, and that was a book you've been preparing yourself for and I chose Stalking Jack the Ripper by Kerry Maniscalco. I changed this, it was originally Vengeful by V.E. Schwab but I ran out of time so I thought I'd try to get through this and I'm like 
This is all I've got left. I've only got a tiny bit left. I'm listening to this on audiobook and following along in the book. And this is about a girl named Audrey Rose who is kind of interested in being a mortician and finding out the reasons for people's death. And it goes from there. There's a lot of things going on in this book and I actually really, really like it. I didn't think I would. I didn't think this was going to be up my alley, but as I continue through it, I'm like, all right. And I have no idea at this point who Jack the Ripper is, so that's entertaining. But yeah, so I nearly finished this one, but unfortunately it does not count because I didn't get it done. From there, I should have um, bought a festive treat to Hedwig at the Owlery, which is an animal on the cover title or series name. And I was supposed to read Wake of Vultures by Lila Bowen. I did not get there, but I'm going to continue this one on my December TBR, as I mentioned before and hopefully get it done. But that is it for me today, guys. That is my whole vlog for the Magical Readathon Christmas at Hogwarts, and I'm gonna go off and try to edit this and get it up for you guys as soon as possible. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more and have not already, and chat to me down in the comments. Let me know if you joined in the Magical Readathon. I would love to hear what you read. And thank you again to the lovely G for hosting. I absolutely adore G, and I absolutely adore the Magical Readathons, and I'm just so glad that I can be a part of it. This vlog now must come to an end. I make videos every Monday and Thursday, and I'll see you in a new one. Bye.